Today's episode of Survival Dispatch News, we're going to be discussing being gas station prepared, also known as being gas station ready. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Survival Archery Systems. Uh, full disclosure here, as always, SAS did not pay us to use their products in this video. They did, however, send us a couple of really innovative survival bows that are designed to be portable and tough. Now this is the Scout Takedown Survival Bow. We've got it put together here so you can see what it looks like. Here's another version. This is the Recon Tactical Survival Bow. Uh, it's designed for quick deployment. It also comes with this digital camo case. Uh, it's already assembled, but it's in its portable condition with fold-out limbs, as you can see here. Really innovative. You just fold them out, string it up, and you're good to go. Now, these survival bows are engineered with aerospace-grade T6 aluminum and the same high-quality composite materials that are used by most popular names in the archery industry as well. Make sure you hit the link in the description to check out these awesome survival bows from Survival Archery Systems, and thanks for watching. All right, we're back. Uh, today's topic is uh, being gas station prepared, gas station ready. Uh, it's a very common place uh, for robberies to occur, not just for the store, but for individuals as well. Uh, when we were searching for news uh, articles on this, uh, there were 32.6 million results on Google. Um, so it's it's really it's a key thing to be aware of when you're getting fuel. And on that note, I'm going to pass it over to Jason here and have him weigh in on his thoughts of the best way to be prepared when you're fueling up for gas. Jason. Sure. Um, yeah, gas stations are one of those places where you just need to be really situationally aware and just head on a swivel, always eyes up, looking around, making sure that you're just aware of your surroundings because that's where a lot of shady characters hang out. Um, I have... A, a couple of rules. One you touched on before we started recording. One is quarter tank is empty. So that's where you have options. And just you, you need to be using your instincts, basically. So if you pull into a shady looking gas station and it looks pretty rough, use your instincts and just avoid the area altogether just so you avoid all all issues. Um, and if you have that buffer of a quarter of tank, you can get a long ways away from that area to get put to a much safer area to fill up. So that's a, that's a big one. Um, and then, uh, once you're at that gas station, you're starting to fill up, just being situationally aware. And by doing that, having your eyes up, paying attention to your surroundings, you're presenting yourself as being less of a target. Um, and the bad guys would be bad guys will potentially move on to a, a easier prey. That may sound bad. You're pushing the problem downstream, but you have a responsibility to take care of yourself. You have a responsibility to take care of the loved ones that are sitting in your vehicle. Um, and that's your primary responsibility. So. Uh, being physically fit, being physically ready, just, just presenting yourself as someone that can handle themselves it makes you a much less vulnerable looking victim. Yeah, I mean, the key thing I think that you hit on there, Jason, is uh, target hardening, essentially. Um, you know, if anybody's had, mm -hmm. you know, a, a home invasion or a theft from their house, the, the first thing that the cops will tell you is, you know, put up a bunch of motion detector lights, uh, potentially put bars on the windows, add a security system, so on and so forth. So given the choice, you know, criminal given the choice between two targets, you know, you have a house that's well defended versus one that's not, they're going to go to the one that's not. And the same thing applies. Most criminals are cowards. Um, so they're going to attack the weakest target. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so, um, with that in mind, uh, Tyler, I know you've got some thoughts on this. Do you want to chime in? Sure. When I the, the first thing I was thinking about when Jason was talking is when I used to work in law enforcement, we had this shady portion of town where there was the same group of people that were always doing the same things. Um, some of them were just homeless people. They had their shtick that they did, and they told you the same story every time you pulled in, and you'd remind them that, hey, you talk to me every week, you know, but – the thing that I started to notice is where they were hiding before you pulled up. Because if you if you look at the gas station from a distance, you're not really going to see these guys. But they've got these little hide spots. They've got this spot on the other side. Uh, the one gas station I'm thinking of, they would hide on the other side of the trees right next to the river. Another gas station, they would sit in front of this big rock. Another gas station, they would sit behind the shrubs. <clears throat> but if you are just paying attention to the overall environment before you roll up into it, you usually spot them. It's not like they're 
you know, covert ninjas hiding in the bushes that are homeless people, or they're groups of people that look like they don't belong, people that would cause my red flags to go up. So I would spot them before I got there because all cops, you know, you've got guns on your hips and this is the, not the place that you go to pee. We had specific locations. We would go to the bathroom so that we wouldn't get ambushed. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm coughing this morning. But I guess what I'm saying is pay overall attention to the place before you roll up. You usually be able to spot them before you get into the location. Um, and there's nothing wrong with driving around at once, especially if you're concerned and you have let your gas get down too far. Um, another thing, and I'm going to use this for places where you're not able to use uh, to bring a concealed pistol, because I think that training first and foremost and pistol is the ultimate equalizer. That's your backup. Um, but without training, it's just something that someone's going to use on you. For the locations where you don't have stuff like that, you're holding gas, right? You're standing there fueling. You're not going to be so stupid as to get back in your car and just let it roll, uh, even if it's cold, if you're in an environment that's shady. So hose them down, right? Now, that sounds a little bit dangerous, but they don't want to get covered in gas any worse than you do. And uh, they see that as a dangerous thing. So you're, you're holding a weapon. Be a little more unorthodox about the things that you consider weapons so that if something bad does happen, you can react against it. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. Never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to get covered in gas, especially now that's that can be dangerous because that stuff can go up and it can burn everybody. But the criminal knows that too, right? That's just, so if they're covered in gas, they're not going to be shooting at you because now they go up in a ball of fire, right? There's a video, you got a YouTube video, the guy uh, he was getting jacked at the gas station and uh, he actually used the. Uh, he actually used the gas and sprayed the gas on him. Did you guys see that? No. No. It was crazy. It was crazy. It's a really good point. And um, I actually have a couple of couple things I'd like to mention as well. You know, as a former law enforcement officer in Tyler, you can attest to this as well. Um, there's, uh, there's a command presence. So, uh, and Tyler, you, you know about this. There's a command presence. That's like um, on the top tier of, um, you know, our tools that we use. So Chris or Tyler, or Jason, someone else mentioned this. If you look like a victim, you're presenting yourself as a victim. Um, if you, you need to make eye contact, you need to keep your head up. When I, when I step out of my, uh, when I, you know, if I walk into the gas station, I'm walking out. The first thing I do is look, see what's on the other side of the door. I look left, I look right, and um, some of these guys are so brazen as just to hang out right outside the gas station, whether they're panhandling or they're whether they're uh, they want to the mug you. Um, who knows what their what their motives are? So some of them are right there. So what you need to do is make eye contact and use your command presence. Excuse me, just a minute, guys. Use your command presence so you don't present yourself as a victim. <clears throat> and I always look around. I always look, and man, my head is always on a swivel. I even I do it so much that I wonder sometimes if if the employees wonder what's wrong with that guy. <laughs> That's how much I yeah. look around. I just I just wanted to uh, poke that out there, you guys. I uh, appreciate that, Danny. Jason, do you have something you want to add? Yeah, another big one about that is just uh, um, not letting people close the distance on you. If you've got a shady looking character coming near you, um, go ahead and speak up. D don't be afraid to hurt someone's feelings. Don't be, you know, shy about it. Don't let them come clean close. And just, just say, hey, stop right there. If you got something to say to me, say it from right there. You know, just be really upfront about it. And if you're being, if it comes off as rude, who cares? You know, what what difference does it make? But if you let them close the distance on you, that that can cause some problems. So just stop them before they get there. Yeah, that distance is an interesting thing. You know, before we had stand your ground here in, in Florida and you had a duty to retreat, uh, the distance can, where you no longer had a duty to retreat was 21 feet. And the premise behind it was, is that somebody can cover 21 feet in approximately the same amount of time it takes to uh, get get a concealed weapon out and take your first shot. And that if somebody's inside the 21 feet, um, let's say they had a knife, 
you may shoot them, but you're probably going to get stabbed. And if you get stabbed multiple times, you're probably not going to survive. And, you know, you could shoot that person and they're still coming at you and they're still going to stab you, even though that their death is imminent. And so is yours. So that's a great point, yeah. Jason. I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh, the key point is situational awareness. So Tyler mentioned it before you go somewhere, you know, then stop, be aware of it. And then Jason, all three of you actually have mentioned, you know, head on a swivel and whatnot. Um, another thing that I mentioned before we were recording is that a, a friend of mine was a semi driver. He got robbed multiple times um, in New York City and he used to carry a fake wallet with him. And, you know, he put stuff in it so it looked like it was his legit wallet. Uh, but it gave him enough time to accomplish your goal, Jason, put distance between himself and the other person, hand over the wallet and, and yeah. out of dodge quickly uh, to just dive avoid the threat. Say again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just avoid that. the conflict altogether if you can. That's that. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're cutting you there a little bit, but. Dang it. Wi Fi is, I'm at Granny's. Wi Fi is not great. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's the old uh, the, the best fight is the fight that never happens. That, that's know, right. That that's it. Sort of thing. And, you know, we've discussed this as a group prior to this video, and there's a handful of bullets that we're going to put down in the description as well that hits on those couple main things. But, you know, there's other things that we're going to mention down below. And I'll just quickly touch on them in case any of y'all want to weigh in on them. But uh, lock your car doors, you know, when you're fueling up. Don't leave the car with the fuel, you know, running on automatic. Uh, steer clear of uh, unknown gas stations that are close to the interstate. Uh, there was a rash of this happening years ago in Jacksonville. Uh, people get off I-95, they go to fuel up, it's a bad neighborhood, uh, bad guys would steal the car, hit the interstate, and they were gone long before the cops had a chance to engage them. Um, if someone um, is concerned about protecting themselves by themselves, you know, bring a friend. Um, so further to the situational awareness thing, and I see this all the time, is stay off your phone. Uh, if you have your head buried in your phone, yeah. that really makes you a target. Um I love Jason's premise of uh, don't let your tank go below a quarter tank. I was mentioning to him that my grandpa used to get on my grandmother. Uh, his rule was half a tank. He used to always say it doesn't cost more to have more a uh, full tank of fuel than a half a tank. Um, hide your valuables in your car. You know, don't leave them sitting out in plain view. Uh, there have been multiple instances of people leaving their pocketbook on the passenger seat. Somebody walks by, has a look, windows down, doors unlocked. They snatch it and, and they're gone. Um, and, and there's a handful of other things that we'll mention as well uh, down in the description. Is there anything else uh, you all would like to add? I'd like to add yeah. something. So, I, And it may have been one of the bullet points we discussed, but there's more than one reason not to gas up at the last pump at the far end, one or the other. And that is that's where you're most likely to find the skimmers that will skim your um, – your credit card and your debit card numbers. So not only it's, it may not be as well lit, uh, it may make you um, uh, more of a, a victim candidate to that person trying to mug you, but it's also more likely to have a skimmer on it than right in the middle <clears throat> in direct view of the uh, the attendants that that work in that place. Something to think about. That That's a great point, Denny. Uh, appreciate you weighing in on that. Uh, so is there anything anybody else would like to add or – are we done for today? Yeah, we have we have in the military it's called red teaming, right? So I think a lot of this stuff, if I hate I hate when people are like, oh, think like a criminal. Well, I mean, but they've kind of got a point, right? Because if you just sit and watch the situation for a minute and think, if I was gonna put a skimmer, where would I put it? If I was gonna run a scam, where would I put it? If and then just figure out what scams are available and then start paying attention. And while you're out there, you say, okay, he's running this scam or they're running on that scam. It's kind of like uh, phishing scams. If you don't know what a phishing scam is in your email and you see one, you might click on the link. But once you know what it is, you have a little bit of education, you start to realize, oh, hey, now I know what I'm seeing. As an example, when I was in Fletzy, um, they took us and did some, let's call it burglary training. They showed us just thousands of different tools that you can use to pick locks and open doors and do all sorts of stuff with. 
And from then forward, now I know what that little piece of metal thing is that I'm looking at. It's not some trinket. It's not some weird necklace. It's a, it's a shim or it's a, uh, an opening tool. So if you start saying, how would I, how would I mug this person? How would I run this scam? Like there's scams where people will switch the hoses on your, uh, um, your, your gas scan. You'll pull up, you'll, you'll type in your stuff. You'll, you try to put your gas in your hose isn't working. Meanwhile, the dude right next to you is filling up his tank because he just put your cord because you switched the hoses. So just simply knowing about these these scams and then knowing how they're implemented makes you pay attention and look at them and go, okay, there's no hose switches on this on this uh, this gas dispenser. Okay, there's no device that's loose on the front of where I put my credit card. So there's no skimmer on this on this gas dispenser. Okay, there's no homies hanging over here, over there, whatever. And you just start to notice these things after you realize that they they exist. And then you can you can immediately spot them and either deter or go somewhere else, call the cops, whatever you choose to do. But if you can spot it before it's there because you know that it exists and you've spent some time thinking about how would I attack this way, you usually just avoid the problem before it even happens. Yeah, well, I think, you know, a combination of awareness, you know, prior to arriving there and situational awareness are important just to play devil's advocate. Yeah, I know several people who have been victims of theft by somebody that they knew and in each instance that person and all three of them were highly intelligent people said I, I never expected that person to do this because my mind doesn't work like a criminal's I, I could have never grasped the concept that somebody would do this because it's outside of my you know parameters that I think in so it's it's it, I think it really falls back on the awareness, awareness in advance going in awareness while you're pumping your fuel. Don't get boxed in between an open door in your car and the tank. Uh, I always stand at the back of my truck. So I've got a, a full field of vision and I put the pump on automatic, but then stand with my hands free at the at the back of the truck. like this above your truck because it's so tall. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, because it's about six foot high at the top of the bed. <laughs> but but also that gives me great situational awareness, believe it or not. When I pull into a gas station, I can see everything. So all right. Well if nobody else has anything to add, I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. I uh, hope everybody has a safe 2023. Uh Jason, you're cutting in and out a little bit. Did you want to add something before we wrap up? That was yeah, Danny. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, got you, Jason. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just gonna add one quick quick thing. Uh, the one and only time that I've ever had to pull my firearm on somebody was at a gas station. <laughs> so the, the, they're definitely the shady places that you got to watch out for people. You got to definitely be situationally aware. Um, it was a, a little bit of a, a frightening moment, but but it, luckily nothing went went too south. Yeah, and, that, and that's a good point. You know, we don't have open carry in florida uh we're one of only four states that doesn't have open carry so that's a uh, california illinois new york and florida south carolina was the fifth one but they brought it in a couple years ago if we're interstating once once we get out of the state of florida i typically open carry and i could go through multiple anecdotal examples when there was somebody shady approaching us at a gas station all i had to do is put my hand on my pistol and that instantly mm -hmm. diffused it okay before we wrap up denny you had something you wanted to add yeah, just one simple tip. If you take nothing away from this, just when you pull up to get gas, just take five seconds before you get out of your vehicle. Look behind you, look right, look left, look all around before you get out of your vehicle. Just be aware of your situation. Don't just pull up, hop out, stick your card in. Just take five seconds for situational awareness. And if you remember nothing else, maybe that'll help. And that's my suggestion. All right. Yeah. I appreciate that, Danny. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll wrap up there. I uh, hope everybody has a safe 2023 and uh, we'll be back with another episode of survival dispatch news in the next couple of days. Uh, please like, and subscribe and check out the comments down below the description in particular, and then add your comments as well. Thank you.